In Greek mythology, the chimera was a fire-breathing hybrid of a lion, a goat, and a snake. This fantastical, mythical creature has inspired the name of one of the spookiest species in the deep. And it makes sense. This deep-sea relative of the shark looks like it's been stitched together from pieces of other animals. Behold, the chimera. Hi, I'm Danielle, and you're watching Animal Logic. Chimeras, also known as ghost sharks, are the forgotten members of the cartilaginous fish class Chondrichthys. When people talk about these fish, they usually only talk about sharks, rays, and skates. And forgotten are these deep sea Frankensteins. The majority of chimera live in the deep oceans around the world, thriving in depths beyond 200 meters. Some chimera have been found living at 2,600 meters deep, though there are a few species, like the fantastically named Chimera monstrosa, that live in much shallower waters, around 50 meters deep. The chimera's closest relatives are sharks, but they parted ways 400 million years ago, about 10 million years before our ancestors emerged from the water. And they haven't changed all that much since. Chimera are the most primitive known cartilaginous fish. While they still bear some resemblance to sharks, they can be easily told apart. One of their most prominent differences are their gills. Sharks can have up to seven gill slits, while chimera only have one. And their gill slit is covered by a flap called an operculum, like bony fish. Also like sharks, chimera don't have any bones in their body, and their skeleton is made of cartilage. Depending on the species, chimera can measure up to 1.5 meters long. While they are hard to study due to their deep sea locale, they're estimated to live well over 20 years in the wild. To defend themselves, most chimera come equipped with a venomous dorsal spine. This spine is located on their backs. It's a modified scale and it breaks off after every use. After which, the chimera grows a replacement. This dorsal spine is very useful in defense and is incredibly painful to humans. Chimera venom can cause necrosis, hallucinations, localized paralysis, and a lot more. You do not want to mess with these ghosts. Chimera reach sexual maturity fairly late in life, and like sharks, male chimeras have external reproductive organs called claspers. They use these tubes to insert sperm into the body of the female. If successful, the female will lay large leathery eggs. Chimera have a particularly difficult time when targeted by fisheries or when caught as bycatch. Their bodies are so adapted to living at crushing depths that when they're hauled out, their bodies can't handle the change, and most don't survive the process. There are three families of chimera. The first contains the plow-nosed chimera, or elephant fish. They get their name from the fleshy appendage sticking out of their face. They can measure up to 125 centimeters long and use their plow to find bottom-dwelling prey, like sea urchins, mollusks, and crabs. Their plow is lined with electroreceptors, which help locate hidden prey by sensing their electric field. Every time a muscle moves, it creates an electric field. Even if their prey sits perfectly still, their hearts give them away. Then the chimera strikes, crushing their prey with their broad, flat teeth. While elephant fish may have the most specialized electroreceptors, all species of chimera have sensory organs used to detect electric fields to find prey. And the coolest thing? You can see them. If you look closely at this chimera's face, you'll see that it's lined with little dots. These are their electrosensory organs. Similar to frogfish, elephantfish have large pectoral fins that help them move along the ocean floor. The second family are the short-nosed chimera, or ratfish. 
Their snout is much shorter than their plow-nosed cousins, and they have a much longer and skinnier tail, hence their name. Finally, the long-nosed chimera. These fish have long paddle-shaped noses, and all eight living species are found in deep, open water. They're also known as spookfish, for obvious reasons. Also definitely reminds me of Zero from Nightmare Before Christmas. Anyone else getting that vibe? What animals should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching!